Good evening ladies and gentlemen, it is David Schlothauer here, your weather enthusiast. In this video, we're keeping an eye on a winter storm that is moving across the northeast within the next couple of days. That's going to bring lots of moderate to heavy snowfall, some gusty winds, and also some heavy rainfall for the southeast and also for the eastern seaboard. And then, we're keeping an eye on a second, more stronger storm system that still looks to develop across the deep south into the upper midwest, bringing another round of strong strong winds and heavy snowfall with severe weather for the deep south. Now taking a look at the latest European model for January the 22nd, 2023 on this fantastic evening where we are keeping an eye on storm number two folks. This one is going to be a lot more impactful than the first system that is currently moving across the northeast. That's because we have a negatively tilted trough. This is more energized and we have more warmer air advection being pulled in on the cold side of the system. So there's gonna be a lot of moisture, a lot of dynamics with this. We're talking severe weather also. So for tomorrow morning, the upper level low and surface low pressure system is going to be located over the four corners. That's the one that's bringing strong winds across the west right now because of a tight pressure gradient. And so light to moderate snowfall will start off, but once we get into, say, Tuesday morning, this is right around, say, about uh, say about 1 or 2 in the afternoon for central time. By the way, the date and time is up above my head, so make sure you do check that out on the top right side of the screen. It shows you what model I'm using, what perimeter, and the date and time, of course. So make sure you check that out throughout the video so that way you understand what day and what time I am covering. And besides, the time above my head is in local time, that's Pacific Standard Time. So add on it one, two, three hours, depending on what time zone you're in. Okay, so this is right around 12 noon for Central Time, and that's where the storm is going to be. We're talking some pretty intense snowfall rates here, especially over the northern panhandle of Texas over portions there of southwestern uh, Oklahoma. That's this blue area on your screen. And to the south, that's where we have the surface slow. We're talking quite a bit of moderate to heavy rainfall. Right now, severe weather does not look to be a big problem with this because of where the surface low is. A lot of the warmer, more unstable air will remain over the Gulf waters of Mexico. So we're not seeing any severe weather as of right now on Tuesday. That could change though in days to come. So keep in mind about that. But it is not until we get into actually, never mind, I got myself mixed up here. It is Tuesday. It is not going to happen as early as we thought. My bad. The surface low is going to be moving really quickly. So by Tuesday evening, like right around, say, about 9 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock at night, that's when the severe weather it could happen. Now, it depends on the dynamics, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But otherwise, lots of snow on the northern side of this. There's going to be enough cold air being thrown onto the back side of the system that we're going to be seeing some moderate to heavy uh, snowfall rates, especially over northern Texas like Dallas, over Oklahoma City, southeastern Oklahoma, northern Arkansas like um, Little Rock, as well as Fayetteville in Arkansas. Hopefully I got that right. Uh, it's a little tongue twister. And southern Missouri, a little bit of moderate to heavy snowfall. But take a look at the dynamics here. Pretty impressive here. We got uh, falling heights out ahead of this. We got a negatively tilted trough. So that's going to bring in more better dynamics for severe weather and strong winds. And then, of course, by the time we go into Wednesday morning here, January the 25th, 2023, at approximately 9 and 10 in the morning, central and east. Eastern time, that's where we have the heaviest snowfall all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Chicago to the south, um, Springfield, Illinois. You're talking a lot about moderate to heavy snowfall. If you're in Indianapolis, if you're in Kokomo, Indiana, if you are in northern Indiana, southern Michigan, you're going to get slammed with a lot of snowfall. Strong winds, a sure bet with this one, maybe some power outages and some travel issues, including for Cleveland, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, as well as Columbus, Ohio, really going to get impacted by this one. Northern Kentucky. Kentucky as well. Going to get slammed with some rain and snow in the mix. And then, of course, in Pennsylvania. Now, again, this is throughout the day Wednesday. All right. But in the meantime, also to the south here, we're dealing with quite a bit of moderate to heavy rainfall and severe weather. Tornadoes, damaging winds are a sure thing. Maybe some large hail with some of the more intense storms. Again, because we're going to have enough warm air advection out ahead of the cold front. So, yeah, watch the skies. Have your weather radio ready to go because, yeah. 
there might be a severe weather warning in your neck of the woods on Tuesday and on Wednesday. All right, this goes into the northeast by the time we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening. This is about 6 to 7 in the afternoon um, in Eastern Standard Time. So when you're getting home from work, it's going to be a mess. We're talking snow, we're talking wind and rainfall, depending on what part of the storm you're in because the surface flows right here over since um, Columbus, Ohio. And this is going to continue to be a problem once it gets into the northeast. So by Thursday morning, so by about 6 to 7 in the morning, uh, for Eastern Standard Time, you're going to be looking at maybe the threat for heavy snow, maybe some freezing rain, and also some slushy snow in the mix with some heavy rainfall to the south of that. Kind of a Neapolitan type setup here uh, with the system as the surface low kind of tracks along right over the Great Lakes. So it's going to be very interesting exactly where this surface low sets up because wherever it sets up is where we have the cold front and the warm front that meet. All right, so if you get the right to the southeast of the surface low, you might get snow, rain, and then back to snow again, maybe some freezing rain in the mix. Versus if you're further southeast, like down here across southern New Jersey, you might start off with a little bit of snow, but mainly it's gonna be a rain event for you, including for downtown New York. It doesn't look to be a huge snow event for the uh, for like New York, for Connecticut, for Massachusetts, or for say, um, Rhode Island. So that's good news, thumbs up, seven up, on that one because this could be a lot worse. This could track further southeast right along the coast. The northern side could be a lot more energized because we have a lot of that Atlantic moisture that gets fed in over the cold air, right? But still a very dynamic system. We're talking still some impacts with this. And then another system may try to swing into the northern plains, more of an Alberta clipper here by Friday morning. And that kind of trucks along with a little bit of snow that is anticipated, but that system does not look to be quite as strong as what we'll be dealing with on Tuesday, even Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with more snowstorms possible thereafter. So now, how much snowfall could you be expecting here? This is going to be part of that thumbnail that I upload. Sorry about a little typo. I just realized I literally made a mistake. Yes, I know how to spell, but sometimes when you're typing so fast and when you're trying to get something uploaded as quick as possible, Possible, you make mistakes. So I do apologize about that. Um, I don't mean to make typos so much, but we all make that um, in this day in life, right? So snowfall totals for the four corners for the Rockies here over the next, say, uh, four to almost five days, anywhere between maybe three inches, maybe up to a foot in the highest peaks like here. Some of the mountain peaks could get as much as a foot, maybe a foot and a half, but the majority under a foot or so. Again, that's a not, we, you, you just had your snow. This is additional snow to come. This is only counting storm number two. Some of you, you're still counting storm number one and two, especially for the Northeast. So we're, um, for storm one, you could be um, ex you could expect maybe about uh, 6 to maybe 12 inches, especially for central New York, maybe for southern um, portion there of Vermont, central New Hampshire, southern Maine. You might get as much as 6 to maybe 12 inches at the very most. I don't think we're going to get much more than that. I'm going to kind of stay on the low end for specific reasons because we're also going to use the 10 and 1 ratio, and that has a little bit lesser snow, snow or so. But maybe an isolated area might squeeze out maybe a 13 or 14 inch mark out of the first system that's the one that's going through right now of course so these totals may be a little lower than what you see here this was rendered at about um, eight o'clock this morning actually uh, at uh, right around 11 o'clock this morning my time the European is always delayed by a little bit all right so that's the first storm the second storm we're gonna add on uh, let's go to the 12 Z run here that's gonna we're gonna add on probably Probably another say three to eight inches of snow for the for the majority here for the north though you might get pretty much anywhere between maybe six to twelve inches of snow the two storms will be equally as impactful I don't think the second storm looks to be pretty strong but not as strong as what we first thought but either way you put it doesn't matter it's gonna be messy strong winds snow rainfall however you want to put it it's a storm that's gonna bring winter weather impacts and you definitely need to heed the National Weather Service watches warnings and advisories when they get issued for that storm system because at the end of the day I'm here to only provide what I know 
Um, the National Weather Service, they're, of course, the best out there. They pretty much know uh, with what they're talking about, all right? I'm only here to help um, relay that information out, okay? So now, another portion of the information that I need to relay out is the severe weather. We're still dealing with a chance of severe weather for the Deep South. Now it doesn't look to be quite as significant as what we thought. That's why the Storm Prediction Center, as what you're about to see, does maintain a slight risk for severe weather for day three. There's still an opportunity that this could get upgraded to an enhanced risk, a level three out of five on the severity index. But right now, I'm going to lean towards a slight risk for until further notice, until they update, because there's still a little bit of uncertainty exactly how this is going to pan out. So when you take a look at our surface winds coming in out of the southeast here as you can see right off the gulf of moisture but the problem is more of your warm frontal boundary is going to be kind of tied up in a very narrow spaced area all the way from central louisiana into central and southern mississippi so a very small potential um area for severe weather that would include more lower based um kind of low bases for maybe tornado genesis potential on top of that, we saw the southeasterly winds at the surface. They're going to veer significantly. This is at 5,000 feet, folks. So out of the south here, anywhere between 60 to 70 knots. So it was very strong veering in the first one kilometer. So from the surface to one kilometer, definitely a lot of veering. On top of that, we have 500 millibar winds at 18,000 feet high above the surface. They're even out of the southwest. So we are really turning the atmosphere up here. We're seeing a lot of curvature to the hodographs. What we're missing is this. We're missing a lot of instability as far as a severe weather setup. If we had a lot of instability, enough sufficient moisture advection out ahead of this, enough boundary layer destabilization within the warm front regime, within the warm sector, we would have more uh, prefrontal um, thunderstorm or supercellular type structure type storms. And a lot of those would be capable of producing strong tornadoes. Now, with the fact that we have limited instability virtually nothing right now for Mississippi and Alabama. It'd be very hard to try to get a spin up going here. If any storm does manage to develop within this environment, we could see at least a marginal tornado threat out of this, maybe a little higher end threat for their south, maybe like a two or five percent chance for spin ups or so in southeastern Louisiana, like Baton Rouge, maybe Gonzales, Louisiana, and further south, but further north, really conditional, maybe a marginal risk at the very most for any uh, tornado potential. Also, damaging winds will likely be the more driven part of this because we have a lot of upper level wind energy, a lot of strong winds in the low and mid levels so we are probably going to see damaging wind gusts of at least 60 miles an hour expected within this maybe even 70 perhaps over louisiana and mississippi that will be the biggest threat with the slight risk for severe weather and if it goes enhanced it would probably be driven by wind anyways not much of a hail threat probably less than five percent or so for that so now as far as the moisture goes the dew points again like what i um kind of emphasized and illustrated is your dew points up here uh into tuesday afternoon and evening gonna be very tamed here low 40s mid 40s maybe some uh upper 30 dew points it's not even favorable for any severe weather you're gonna have cold air being entrained here out of the easterly direction it is in this narrow corridor in Louisiana and maybe even central and southern Mississippi, um, you have the best chance of seeing maybe some severe weather, maybe even into the overnight hours of Wednesday, right along this regime here where we have a cold front, where we have a warm front, kind of this whole kind of uh, A kind of shaped letter here with all the warm air, this nose of higher dew points in the low to mid 60s. So that will probably be the narrow corridor focus point for surface-based storms, maybe Maybe a few intense supercells that could cause um, some tornado potential down here. But otherwise, the majority of this is going to be wind-driven, like I just said. All right. Even so, it's not on the Storm Prediction Center. That does not mean that we could ignore it. There is a slight risk for severe weather, as noted here. Um, you can see the yellow, the level 2 out of 5 on the severity weather index. We also have a marginal risk for severe weather around that. But again, this marginal risk probably a 2% chance of tornadoes. And then in the slight risk for severe weather, maybe a 5% chance of tornadoes and a maybe a 15 to 30 
percent chance of damaging winds. Right now, it does not look to be significant to warrant a 30 sig or 15 sig, but keep up to date on the SPC for latest information on that. And again, hail threat looks very tamed at this point, maybe less than 5% given the poor thermos that are out there with this in, or within the warm sector. But if we get enough cold air aloft and we get enough steepening mid-level lapse rates, I would probably up the hail threat to a, maybe a 5% or so. But it's going to be really wind-driven and tornado-driven, especially further south, where we have better kinematics and thermodynamics. All right? Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it a lot. If you did, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, folks. Show your awesome support. And also, please share this with your family and friends on social media. We got to get this out to a lot of people. You did pretty good. Yesterday, we had almost 11,000 views, all thanks to you all sharing this with your family, your friends, your co-workers, however you want to put it. So I do appreciate that very much because, again, the more we share this, the more people watch, the more people that are aware of what's going to be happening here by the middle of the week. We're not just continuing with snow, wind, and rain. We're also continuing with the threat for severe weather for the Deep South, including for portions there of Florida and even Georgia. So keep that in mind, okay? But also, please show your extra support by checking out our weather website. It's Mesovort WX. Evan James. I always make that mistake. I do not know why that happens, but be sure you do check out the website. Become a member today. It's completely free and will always be. Don't miss out. We have blog posts. We have a lot of cool stuff in there that um, you definitely want to see. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on this weather situation for the middle of this coming week.